Hey everybody, welcome back to WASD20. My name is Nate, and today we have Fantasy Map Making Part 6. This is going to be, I think, the final part of, uh, of this particular map and uh, the original map making series that I started. So, uh, yeah, today we are going to be focusing on interesting and unique geographical features, things like swamps, volcanoes, deserts, maybe another thing or two, but we'll see. So to start off with, I have come up with a couple other names of places uh, that we can we can fill in here. Uh, one of them is uh, this island over here. I've just done a little more kind of world building, I guess you would say. And th these islands over here are going to be the islands of Eryx. And um, I don't know which one is which. We're just going to call the this region Eryx. And it is kind of a jungle sort of place, I guess, and it's inhabited by Dragonborn, and there are rumors that dragons may still exist there, uh, but not much is known about it from the, the people's outside here. So, here we go, let's fill it in. Now, in terms of the uh, interesting geographical features that we're going to be drawing today, this map, I don't have, honestly, a whole lot of room left, and originally I was not thinking I would have any sort of swamps or deserts evident that I wouldn't really draw them in here, and you don't have to, really. You, I mean, you can just say, this, this area here is a desert, and there's really nothing there. Uh, but for my purposes, I, I do like to kind of stylize it a little bit, and maybe uh, use some iconography in a way to, uh, to demonstrate that this is a little bit different. This is a desert, this is a swamp, etc. So uh, I'm going to be making this area sort of a lowlands area, and over here we are going to have sort of a, a dry, arid climate or, or desert. So this area over here is going to be lowlands, sort of a swampy area, and we're going to call it the Urish lowlands. So I'm going to take my ruler here and draw in some guides for the lettering. Having a lot of trouble getting my webcam to focus well <laughs> lately, so I apologize if it's not incredibly in focus. But I don't know what to do. I'm kind of at a loss. I've, I've messed with it for hours. But anyway, we've got our Urish lowlands in place, and now we're going to go up here, and we're going to do our uh, desert type region. All right, and I keep going back and forth on what to name this place, uh, but here's what I know about it, just to give you a little world building. Um, this place is going to be inhabited by, by some dwarves, as well as other you know, various monsters of all kinds, perhaps orcs too. Uh, but there, this is actually sort of a, I guess there would be hill dwarves, but they're this just hardy desert dwarves that, that mainly live underground uh, in the desert. There's some, some stone structures in the middle of the desert and um, they, they live underground and somewhat under these mountains too but stretching out into the, the desert actually uh, so just kind of a they're, they're not the most friendly dwarves <laughs> but uh, I've been going back on what to, what to call them but they're gonna be the dwarves of Keslek I thought of having it just called the waste <laughs> I think that's from uh, maybe from the Wheel of Time I can't remember where I got that but I like that idea In the Wheel of Time I think they have the Aiel waste and again, I don't have much room here to actually draw <laughs> much of anything, but I will draw a little bit, uh, just to signify this area as a bit of a wasteland, a bit of a desert. All right, so let's start with our lowlands here in terms of drawing now. And what I do is I, I make some sort of wavy lines um, that, that can be kind of like waves or maybe hills, but I, I try to make them more like, look like waves. And so, wavy lines like this. Probably kind of hard to see those pencil lines right now, but when I put them in pen, you'll be able to see them better. And I, I don't make them all the same. Some of them are longer than others. I try to vary them. Thank you. 
And then what I do in here is I kind of make these little plants kind of sprouting out of these these waves to, you know, if it looks like water, that's that's fine, but you also want it to make it look like land. So how do you do that? Well, you put some little sprouts here. This is almost like, I, I imagine it almost like skunk weed, which was something that we had in uh, in Washington growing up quite a bit, and it, it smelled like skunk. <laughs> it didn't smell that good. So, um... Yeah, and that did grow in, it tend to grow in kind of swampy areas. I remember I had a good friend who had some near his house, and it was rather unpleasant. But anyway, it's growing here, and then, you know, here and there maybe another little sprout of some kind. Just little sprigs. And then, perhaps some, some lighter lines. Down to a slightly thinner pen, so number two. Just to kind of add a little more detail. Alright, so there are our lowlands, the swampy area, all kinds of, you know, bullywugs and other interesting creatures um, live there of course so I'll give you a, a look here at my um, a, a map that I did where I did an, another swamp and this one I kind of um, I enclosed it a little bit I just kind of did these wispy lines on the outside just to kind of set it apart from the area around it so that's something you could do too uh, for this one I'm just gonna leave it as is but uh, yeah that's that's another way so this is a, a map, by the way, that I um, I was commissioned to do uh, a while back. And the guy had asked me to do some things that I had not done before. Uh, swamp, desert, he gave me a pretty detailed list of uh, the things he wanted. Uh, you know, a mountain range, some hills, um, and all these things. And uh, yeah, so it, it was a good challenge for me and um, a good chance for me to try some of that stuff before I do it on my own map here. <laughs> Let's uh, let's get up to this waste now. So, <clears throat> I you know never yeah I, I guess when I was thinking about doing deserts before I, I just always thought I, I'm just gonna do like kind of straight lines here, just straight lines, short straight lines, kind of like these we did with the lowlands only just straight. And I didn't really know what else to do, but I started looking around a little more and I, I did a little bit of searching around on the Cartographers Guild website, which is really cool. And I discovered this method that I'm now going to try to put on my own map. And uh, so it, there's just kind of these almost uh, rocky structures that look like they're just kind of windswept or something like that. that are sticking out. Uh, I just thought they looked cool. And so I found that on a map and that's what I'm going to try to do on my own. There's also a little cactus there and kind of some, some wispy lines almost looking like question marks without the dot. So that's what I will be trying to do here in this very limited space that I have. Um, of the Keslek Waste. So, uh, let's see what we can do here. So, I don't know, it got a little crowded there, <laughs> but uh, maybe I tried to fit too much in. But anyway, there it is, and, and I would imagine that the Keslek Waste extends quite a ways over here as well, off the map, but um, yeah, I think that'll be good enough for now. I'll probably do some touching up here and there, and maybe get a little more refined with my, my shading um, in a final, final run through the map, but uh, yeah. 
think I'll, I'll stop messing with it now. With the, um, the cactus, I like to get a real thin pen, so I've got a .05 here, um, or an 005, I guess. And uh, I'm gonna do just the little little spines or whatever coming off that cactus and we'll do a little shading too just very light shading on the right hand side there we go not bad another thing to consider if you are doing um, a swamp is you could make it kind of misty um, this one right here that I did for uh, my first live stream mapping you know I kind of started experimenting a little bit and it it would look best if you could probably made it go over the coast a little bit uh, but these just basically long wispy clouds um, that are just kind of very simple and I did that too with this volcano which we'll talk about volcanoes here in a minute so I'm kind of debating whether to do uh, any more cities or towns here, but I think I'm going to just do one more uh, little town down here. And yeah, other than that, I think I'm going to call it good for cities and towns. I thought I could do one here, I could do one here, I could absolutely add more. But I'm going to let that happen a little more organically, just because I haven't actually run too many games in this world yet. And it's nice to be able to have some flexibility. All right, now although I am not going to be doing any other features on my own map, I thought I would show you a couple at least. Um, some of these I got just web searching around and trying to find good ways to do things. Others I um, found in my fantasy map making book, uh, which I actually don't have with me right now. But, you know, you could do something like this, kind of a big rift in the ground. Fantastic Maps has a good tutorial on how to do that if you, you just Google Fantastic Maps. Uh, you could do some cairns, I think in the, uh, the book these were called troll cairns, so something like that could be cool. Of course, ruins are, are pretty easy to do actually, just make some, some structures kind of broken down and maybe put some, some rocks around it and uh, add some shading and uh, it can look pretty cool. Uh, this one is straight out of the book and this is kind of like an old portal of sorts, almost like a stonehenge sort of thing where people might wonder, what is it there for? In terms of volcanoes, uh, volcanoes naturally probably would blend in pretty well with the rest of the mountains, but often in a fantasy map we're not concerned about realism, we're concerned about making it look cool, and so uh, you'd probably want to make a bigger mountain, something like this, or even bigger, and the way I would do it is just take the top off. You, know, you have a mountain here, and curve that front, and curve the back the other way, and this is nothing like what volcanoes usually look like, <laughs> but again, we're just trying to symbolize a volcano, and so then we would add some shading as we would with our mountains. And, uh, and then probably some, some shading in here as well. So you could either kind of leave it like that, or you could shade it completely in like that. <clears throat> I've experimented with trying to add like wisps of smoke, and I'm never satisfied with how that looks um, personally. I just think it looks a little too um, campy, cheesy. I don't know. You could even make just a giant crater sort of lake where you just kind of have, um, which, you know, that's there are places like that in the world. Or it's just a huge crater. Something like that. And um, you could, you know, have it be a, a lake with water in it. I think lakes usually have water. So something more like that could work too. Now, what about a canyon or a cliff? I haven't tried this before, but let's go ahead and try it. I, I'm gonna just draw the shape of a, a cliff here and in order to do that you would probably want to make lines going down kind of like we do with our mountains going off the ridge line of a mountain 
because it actually is kind of similar to that. And then you can make, so you can make these dark, and then you can add more shading if you want to uh, with maybe a, a thinner pen here. Something like that. Uh, I, I think I liked it better without the without the shading. I'm kind of messing that up. But yeah, that can represent a cliff pretty well, and if you want to make it, you know, uh, you, you could make it a, a wide canyon where it's kind of like this is the other side of it. And um, yeah, you can kind of do something like that. And then on this side, you probably wouldn't have all that much. Uh, but yeah, that's one way to, to do a cliff or a canyon. But I have seen people just doing their, their canyons kind of like this, where it's just kind of a big a big opening in the ground. You can also have cliffs, you know, on the on the edge of water too, and that can look kind of cool. So you can do something like, you know, like this, and then you can have slopes going down to the water below. kind of have your waves crashing up against it. All right, so something like that. So yeah, there are lots of geographical features you can do, but there's lots of great resources out there too. Check out the Cartog Cartographer's Guild. Uh, check out the tutorials on Fantastic Maps. He's got great stuff. Um, and yeah, if you have any other questions, let me know. Um, I might you know, show off some more interesting geographic features in, in future maps you never know but the last thing I gotta do here on this map of Inchar is the lettering for Inchar which I've been putting off forever and ever which makes me even more nervous about finally doing it now but I'm finally going to do it now and, and it probably won't turn out as well as I hope but I did pencil it in here uh, and I feel I'm feeling pretty good that it's a it's a good start here with what I've penciled in so I'm gonna take my number two And I've kind of got the outline of the letters here, and I'm, I am going to be filling them in completely black. While I'm speeding through the video of this uh, lettering, I'll just take the time to thank everybody for tuning into the series and for uh, the positive feedback and response I've got. I started this series back in June, I think it was. Uh, I just got inspired by some Questing Beast videos and the, uh, the RPG Map Makers Consortium on Facebook and just decided to give it a shot and I turned the camera on and started drawing and uh, the response was great and very encouraging and I just had a blast so for those of you who have been with me and uh, since the beginning back in June of this series thank you for the encouragement uh, to keep going and for those of you just don't joining and maybe uh, binge watching this all in one day <laughs> uh, thank you too you rock All right, as we've reached the end here, I realized one thing I forgot is that I didn't really do my normal texture that I like to add to the maps by just drawing little blades of grass and little tufts and things across the blank spaces of the map. I'll just add some texture again. So I'm doing that now. Boom! There it is, my friends. The map is done. Uh, so yeah, this has been a lot of fun. Thanks again. Um, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. There's a lot of things that you know I've learned along the way that I, I would do definitely a little different. Uh, a second time around and guess what there probably will be a second time around I'll probably be uh, continuing the mapping videos here and there um, you know mixed in with a healthy portion of other RPG stuff and maybe some PC game stuff the mapping is a monthly series that will be happening and make sure you check that out you can follow me on WASD 20 on Facebook and uh, you can stay tuned for those events if you want to download the PDF of this map of Inshar you can feel free to do that it'll be linked in the description below if you're interested in having me do a map of your homebrew world I am accepting commissions so uh, yeah just get in touch via uh, my website wasd20.net there's a fantasy mapping section there and uh, it's, it would be a great help to me because it really helps me develop my skills and get better and push me and keeps me in practice. And it also helps the bank account a little bit so I can continue to buy things uh, that help 
makes the videos better, uh, more supplies for mapping and things like that. So yeah, all right, that's all for me. Everybody, take care. I'll see you again soon. Keep world building, keep on mapping and exploring, and uh, having fun. See you next time.